Hey everybody, this is the Planet Earth here. I'm going to be talking to you today about anxiety attacks and the scientific reasoning for these anxiety attacks. What I've come to the conclusion to, what my fiance has told me, and what I've come to learn from this, that even though, of course, during an anxiety attack, I will still think that I am for some reason dying, I'm going to explain physically what's going on in the actual body, which nobody's really ever talked about. So, when, okay, the buffer system, scientifically, you need your heart, your lungs, and your kidneys, the buffer system. So, with this buffer system, if you start increasing your heart rate, you have to increase your lungs to breathe in more and to breathe out more and breathe in more and breathe out more but because of the fight or flight response that kicked in which released adrenaline into your body so because it released adrenaline into your body this is what happens when you release too much adrenaline in your body so when the body is in fight or flight mode releases too much adrenaline inside the body what ends up happening is your heart rate increases really fast right you have a power you're like oh my god oh my god you know so what happens is, is the body compensates for the heart rate increase when it's not in actual physical danger, but it's still in virtual physical danger, but it's very real, by the way. It's like you're having a heart attack without the chest pain. Your lungs have to go up and down faster because your heart has increased. Hence, you need more oxygen to your your body because your heart rate increased because of the adrenaline release on your body. So because that adrenaline release is releasing that chemical adrenaline to the heart, it's causing it to beat very rapidly in some cases or faster than normal, which increases blood pressure, which increases respiratory rate. Now because you're breathing fast, you start panicking about breathing fast and about that heart rate increase so you breathe too fast and because you breathe too fast guess what now you're causing an imbalance in your body your physical body in your respiratory area you're causing an imbalance now that you're breathing too fast abnormally you might actually be breathing too fast and you're giving your body too much oxygen and not enough dioxide is either leaving or coming in. So because this are, are going out. So now that you're breathing in too fast, your body's building up too much carbon dioxide while you're breathing out and in too fast. So because your body's breathing in too fast, or breathing out and breathing in too fast, you're getting too much oxygen at faster rate than the body can give it to the heart and give it to the rest of the body. So now you got too much oxygen in your system, but not enough dioxide. So now you start feeling the tingling. And you start feeling that tingling, and the, the, the tingling sensation. And then it gets worse. And then it keeps worse. That's why they tell you to breathe in a paper bag. Because now that I know this, which I didn't know until now, until yesterday. So the buffer system is compensating. So if you're having a hard time breathing now... Guess what's going to happen? Now the heart rate is going to go even higher. Because not only is the adrenaline kicked in, but now your buffer, a.k.a. your lungs, are trying to figure out what the hell is going on. So now you're breathing rapidly. But you're not getting those vital nutrients to the increased heart rate. So now that your heart rate's increased, now you're going to be kind of breathing faster, which will cause an imbalance because the adrenaline plus the breathing rapidly because of the heart rate increase. And the only reason you're breathing faster is because of the heart rate increase, which then puts you into a full panic mode, which sends even more adrenaline and the, the vicious cycle continues while you're having this attack. And until you get your breathing down, even though it's hard because of the way it feels, uh, you won't have, you won't stop your panic attack easily. Eventually, the body will eventually 
adapt, adapt. Hi, crocodile! Look at you with your big ass teeth. It's cold. How the hell are you out here? Um, so with the buffer system, it's compensating. So everything's compensating each other, and that's the reason why you get anxiety attacks. And that's the reason why you feel anxious. Now, the reason why you may feel anxious but don't get an anxiety attack is because even though you are anxious, your body's in a heightened mode, which means you're slightly releasing a little bit of adrenaline. So you will be very anxious from that adrenaline rush, which is fucking amazing now I know this. So your main cause in general is when you start having a panic attack, when your body senses that fear, you're going to realize that, oh my God, this is real. This is happening. Guess what? You are having a panic attack because your body released adrenaline into your system, which caused your heart rate to increase, but because your heart rate increased, your respiratory rate increased, which causes you to breathe, and then you start breathing abnormally, and then you start freaking out because you're breathing abnormally, and you're like, you're like, oh my god, oh my god, and 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 then and then the heart rate increases because now you're freaking the hell out, so more adrenaline's coming in, and then boom, panic attack. How does a benzodiazepine work for ben or for acute panic attacks? Well, this is what happens. When a benzodiazepine gets to those receptors, in general, rumble strip, when, when the benzodiazepine gets into the GABA receptors, it stops, it helps at least, well, no, in an emergency situation, I was in an emergency situation once, and even when I had a benzo in me, my heart rate was still high as hell. Uh, it suddenly, it went, it skyrocketed, the benzo didn't do nothing. But the fear response, I think the GABA, and some other parasympathetic nerves or the something, I don't know if it's the parasympathetic system or whatever it is called, it controls that fear emotion. So what the what the GABA receptor what it does to the GABA receptors is it, it tells those those receptors to calm down. So in turn from that calming down, it, it, you know, it calms the brain down physically, slows the reaction of whatever you're going through down enough to cause you to relax, which will cause your respiratory, well, well, benzodiazepines are known as a CNS depressant. It can depress your system, especially if you take it with alcohol. So since it has some sort of CNS depressant, it slows your, your breathing rate down, which in turn puts less strain on the heart and, and causes the heart rate to slow down because it's not working as hard. And then when those benzodiazepines hit the GABA receptors, okay, now the GABA receptors are relaxing the brain. Now it's relaxing your breathing. So your heart's like, okay. So there's not as much adrenaline being rushed, pushed out. Okay, I can calm down now. And then, and then your body takes a look at the situation. Oh, I really wasn't in mortal danger. Oh my God. I really wasn't in actual mortal danger. I, okay, I can calm down now. Then you get, you catch, you kept, you kept, you, you capture your breath again. So you get your breath back. That's a good thing, by the way. So you get your breath back now. And then the brain calms down. Now during deep breathing, sometimes, if you slow down your breathing enough, guess what happens? If you slow down your breathing enough, you can cause your panic attack to stop or slow down. Because you're not working your lungs so hard because you're going, you're deep to breathe, you breathe, you're, you're getting those uh, proper, you know, alkaline levels back to normal. You're not gonna become, ac you know, acidic or whatever the hell they call it. 
I don't know the scientific term. I'd have to talk to my fiance or look on Google. But it gets those levels back to the normal pH levels of what is in your system of carbon dioxide or uh, oxygen. So when you got that mix starting to go back to normal, then you're like, okay, I can capture my breath. I don't have that urge to breathe out faster. That is what causes panic attacks. I cannot believe after all these years, it was something as simple as the adrenaline being released into the bloodstream, going to the heart, causing the heart rate to increase, which then in turn causes the respiratory rate to increase, which then in turn causes our fucking panic attacks. But it starts with the amygdala and the GABA receptors. It starts there. The fear response, the fight or flight. So if that fight or flight is triggered for subconsciously, consciously, you're gonna have a panic attack. So now that we know the science behind it, what can we do to slow down that part of the brain that says, oh my God, I'm gonna die! To slow it down a little bit so it doesn't trigger that panic attack which will release that adrenaline which will increase the respiratory rate which will then increase your anxiety and produce even more adrenaline which will increase the respiratory rate and the heart rate and then cause you to have a panic attack and the feels because uh, the, the, you get the uh, the needles in the in the filling and the fainty feelings because you're breathing too fast even though you may not think you are but during an anxiety attack, you most likely you're going to be breathing too fast. So you're going to get too much oxygen in the system, not enough carbon dioxide. I don't know why the body needs carbon dioxide, but whatever. And you're either not expelling enough carbon dioxide or you're breathing in too much oxygen, one of the two. So during an anxiety attack, you may pass out from breathing too fast, which of course is an imbalance with the uh, gas levels in your system. But the gas, all about that gas. Oxygen and, and carbon dioxide. So now we know the physical element of the anxiety attack and panic attack. They're very similar. It's very fearful. It's very scary. It's very real. Um, whatever can calm down the GABA receptors is what needs to be calmed down to get peak calmness after a panic attack and after an anxiety attack. But now that you know what happens, increasing blood pressure... Uh, palpitations, you know, because you're breathing improperly, and the system's like, hey, fuck you. What the hell's going on here? But now that you guys know the science of it, maybe you won't have as many anxiety attacks now that you guys know the science. And this is based on my experience and what my fiance's explained to me and the anatomy of the human body. But because of that stupid ass amygdala and the stupid ass GABA receptors is our main cause of anxiety to begin with because it's over analyzing all the time. That's what generalized anxiety does by the way. You over analyze, your body freaks the fuck out, you get that fear receptor going, boom, panic attack. Too much, too much caffeine, possible panic attack. Too much, uh, in some people, weed, marijuana, too much panic attack. You can have a panic attack because of it. What I am trying to explain to you guys is that's the scientific version of it. And no, that's not exactly... I, I might be kind of wrong on this because I'm not a doctor or a nurse. But I'm just going on based on what I remember what she told me. Thank you guys for watching. And this has been the Planet Earth here. Uh, if you guys like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, I appreciate you guys very much. I appreciate all my subscribers no matter what. And I will continue to make informative videos. It's 2018. We need to find that cure for anxiety. The cure. Permanently. We're going to find that cure no matter what.